perhaps you can give us a bit more detail as to what he was doing in Iraq in the first place and how he came to come across these items. Yep, he was on a trip, on a, a geology archaeology trip um, in Iraq um, after COVID. I mean, he hadn't he hadn't gone on holiday for more than two years, and he was looking forward to this to this trip. Um, uh, never been to Iraq. He's never been to Iraq, and it's a a, a guided tour, um, and uh, for two weeks. Yes, uh, for yes. two weeks, and um, um, after. Oh, he would he would text us every day and um, would we check on him and everything was fine until um, the day he was he was leaving um, at Baghdad Airport. Um, uh, he said there was a holdup, um, and we that that was it. You know, there was a holdup and and with customs and he didn't he didn't really explain what what else. Um, so we thought okay maybe. Um, uh, just a, a bit of a delay, um, but um, he couldn't. Well, he didn't turn up in in KL, and um, after her, sorry, um, after yeah, sorry about that. Um, no, it's okay. So I appreciate it's difficult. Emotional. Sam, perhaps you could take over. I'll speak to um, to Layla again in a moment. It's okay. No, no. It's, yes. So, uh, so, so, Jim, one of one of the sites that they visited on the tour was a, a, a site. Eridu, um, which is a, a, an ancient site in Iraq. It's, it's a desert that's sort of strewn with big chunks of masonry and, and you know, sort of small ruined walls and things, um, mostly Shots. desert though. Uh, and uh, on the floor surrounding the site and all over the desert are these tiny pieces of pottery and broken stone, um, which Jim uh, asked if he could take home as a, as, as a souvenir. Um, so there's no signage, there's no guards, there's no fencing of any kind at the site. There's no warnings that this is not only illegal, but carries a death sentence. Um, and Jim was accompanied by a tour guide with over 40 years experience, by a, a representative from the Ministry of Tourism in Iraq, uh, and by a former police officer acting in security. And none of them registered any protest about, about you know, his request. So so he picked up a few pieces and popped them in his bag to, to take home as a souvenir, mostly sort of the size of your fingernail. Got some pictures there, um, and yeah, was 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 arrested at the airport. His tour guide was uh, was taken ill with a stroke at the airport. Um, another British citizen who unfortunately passed away in Iraq a few days followed, and um, and Jim was Jim was arrested for attempting to smuggle historical artifacts out of the country. And um, we've been managing the situation and trying to trying to help him get get home safe ever since. Really. Sam, from what you told us, I, I mean, your father-in-law is a retired um, geologist, he did ask yes. he could take those items. He was, yeah. you yeah. say, given misinformation. He was unaware of Iraqi law. And from what we can gather, another man was on trial as well. He was acquitted because he showed no criminal intent. intent. Can you talk me through mm -hmm. that, how it was that, that your father wasn't able, uh, your father-in-law wasn't able to show that he meant no criminal intent, given what you've told us? Yes, so I, uh, the, the difference the difference between the two and, 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 and the reason that the German man's was actually around around who actually physically picked up the pieces off the ground. So, so Jim picked up the pieces off the ground and later gave to, to the German man, we understand, as souvenirs for himself. Um, that's where the distinction lies between the two. But the judge, the judge himself, admitted that, that that Jim also had no no criminal intent, and indeed was not aware of the law that he was breaking when when you know they were in the desert. Um, and that's why this this verdict is is so hard for us to swallow. Really, it's it, it, it's almost in direct contradiction of, of of comments made by by the judge himself. So we are we are hopeful about about the appeal and that the, the verdict will be will be quashed at the appeals court. But uh, obviously, just at the moment, just kind of shell shocked and devastated, and trying to get any help we can to, to to support and bolster the appeal. Yeah, we'll talk about what you're doing in just a moment. But Layla, have you been able to speak to your dad? As soon as we heard um, the verdict, I, I tried calling him, um, and he. We were lucky enough to get to speak to him, and uh, he was just shocked because we were feeling positive. Uh, leading up to trial yesterday, and uh, he was yeah he was he was calm. Um, he was just shocked. And I was I mean 
hadn't spoken to him for 93 days and it was it was nice to hear his voice um and i was obviously getting a bit emotional but he he stayed strong and yes i mean his his focus was on was on the practical things so making sure that that there's enough money available for for later's mom to to buy food and pay bills you know whilst he's whilst he's away um making sure that we've we've sorted out you know getting everything into the right people's names um yeah. just just you know in, in case we don't see him for for 15 years is, is kind of what he's thinking oh later i'd imagine that's unfathomable for you it's, it's a life sentence at his age isn't it yes i mean we were obviously keen for the first half of this process to to make sure that everyone was aware that the death penalty was in play and obviously we are we are grateful that jim was not sentenced to the death penalty but for a 66 year old man 15 years in an iraqi jail is tantamount to the death penalty as far as as far as we're concerned you know if he if he does if he does get out of prison after that period of time he'll be 81 years old and, and obviously completely changed by the experience sam, I imagine. so we, sam what are your options what are your next steps um so we've 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 raised the appeal. The appeal will be will be put in place in the next few days. At which point, there's a sort of a thirty day timeline for the appeal to be to be reviewed and either for the verdict to be quashed or upheld. Um, past that, we don't know. I mean, uh, I've 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 moved out to to Malaysia for a few months to to be with the family. Obviously, still working full time, but we we need to just look after the people close to us at the moment as as priority number one. Um, and and you know, work as hard as we can to, to do everything possible to get Jim home safe. And Lena, just a final word from you. What would you say to those people who may be in a position to help your father? That's the thing. I feel so helpless because we've had so much support. And I mean, thank you so much. We've had emails, calls, messages from all over the world. And it's been really overwhelming and I just feel so helpless because I wish I know what to do. Yeah. There's no playbook for something like this. When this when this happens to you, there's nobody who phones you up, and tells you how to deal with it. And you know, the, the foreign office has provided us with sort of basic on the ground consular support. We haven't provided with any political support. We've never spoken with any minister, no matter how junior about this case in all the weeks we've been shouting about it. Um, we feel like we've just been left on our own, really. Yeah. Well. Leila and Sam, um, it's been good to talk to you this afternoon, raising awareness uh, of your father and your father-in-law's um, plight in Iraq, sentenced to 15 years uh, in prison. As you said, you are going through the appeals process now. Um, please keep in touch with us. Let us know what happens and we will speak again. Um, Leila Fritton and Sam Tasker there speaking on behalf of Jim Fitton, Thank you. Um, who is in an Iraqi jail, as we said, for taking uh, artefacts out of Iraq. It was against Iraqi law. He said he was told it was OK. We did have um, a statement from the Foreign Office to bring you as well. Uh, the Foreign Office spokesperson telling Sky, we are providing consular assistance to a British national in Iraq and continue to support his family. We are in contact with the local authorities. We'll keep you up to date on that story here on Sky News.